But England's match against the West Indies now takes on even more significance. Quite simply, the whole of England's World Cup future depends on it. We have to win if we're to have any chance of qualifying now for the semi-finals. First semi-final, which will be played in Lahore, and West Indies and England are now left to contest that second semi-final place, each of them with eight points, but the West Indies just ahead with that superior run rate, and that run rate might yet prove crucial. Well, the situation for England, they know they've got to beat the West Indies today and then also win their last match, which is against Sri Lanka. Well, our commentators in Jaipur are Ray Illingworth, Jack Bannister, and first of all, Tony Lewis. The toss won by Vivian Richards, and he decided on a grassy pitch to put England into bat first. And the England lineup, same as in the last match, Gooch, Robinson, Affy, Gatting, Lamb, Embury, Downton, De Freitas, Foster, Small and Hemming. And the West Indies too, trusting the combination which played from last, Simmons and Haynes, the openers, Richardson, Richards, Logie, Hooper, Dujon, Harper, Benjamin, Patterson, and Walsh. And the umpires, one from Pakistan, Mr. Shah, and from Sri Lanka, Vidana Gamage. So we join now in the third over, the fifth ball, and Patrick Patterson goes to Tim Robinson, 10 runs on the board. And that's through, beautifully played. Past those two gullies, four runs. Well, this is the stroke which can be Tim Robinson's strength and sometimes his weakness, but their footwork perfect, the first boundary of the morning. Oh, well, oh, he's dropped him. And Dujon's dropped him. That was beautifully bowled by Patterson. He opened Robinson right up there. Moved away off the pitch. And uh, Dujon, in fact, was setting off down leg side, I think, Jack Bannister. Yes, he was. This ball angled in on middle stump. And that's the shot which gets Robinson into trouble against the extra pace. Comfortable height, but just that little bit wide of Dujon. That was his undoing. That's going quite quickly. Really ran away down there. Just a nudge from Robinson, but the outfield, uh, which was very damp and wet with the heavy morning dews, certainly couldn't up. Patrick Patterson now to continue. Going to Tim Robinson, who was on 13. And there's no doubt about that one. That just come back a fraction. And the off stump, in fact, the off stump is broken in two pieces. The chap was just laid back, but in fact, there's half the stump left in the ground, and the other half down by the wicketkeeper there. That's so Robinson there, then bowled by Patrick Patterson for 13. Well, almost inevitable, one thought, because playing defensively to a ball which nipped back, on the back foot, rocking back, ball cutting back, just taking the top half of the off stump. England then in the ninth over. Tim Robinson bowled by Patterson for 13 with a score on 35. Bowling change now. Roger Harper to come on. There's his performance in one day cricket. 51 wickets. Useful bowler, nagging, darting it in around leg stump, just bowling to a field of three on the offside. And that's just what Graham Gorsh is looking for. Harper slightly quicker delivery, just short of the length, and of course on this wicket when the ball comes on, Graham just is standing back and cutting that away to the third man bound before that. Well, there's what they're playing for, the Reliance Cup, which was made here in, in Jaipur. 24 inches in height, 6.5 kilos, made by local craftsmen, magnificent new trophy. Superb shot. How quickly he picked up the short length of that ball and whipped that very heavy bat of his over three pounds in weight. And the ball went for four just in front of the square leg. Four to Gooch.
Now that's a super shot. The remarkable thing about that stroke is that he played it on the oven. And just a flick of the bat. And the man down at the third man, who was well positioned by Richards, scarcely made a couple of yards. Half an hour to Bilafi. Well, a splendid bit of cricket, rather painful for Patrick Patterson. But uh, I thought excellent batting by Affy, who once threatened to go down the pitch at uh, Harper, then waited and swept, and then Patterson half stopped, and the ball just trickled onto the boundary line. Four runs to Affy, four more to England. And again. Oh, almost the same thing happened. Almost an action replay for Patrick Patterson. He made good ground, but this is a lightning outfield. And that's a fine contribution from Bilhassi. The stroke he plays so well. So four more to England, who are now 81 for one. Introducing the fifth bowler now then, Carl Hooper to Gooch. Hooper has impressed commentators out here by his variation. Goes a very good slower ball, just an off cutter, mixed up with seamers. Well, this really is bad bowling, and Liv uh, Richards will be very annoyed. A bowler knows roughly when he's going to bowl in these one day matches, he's got to be loose. You can't afford to come on a ball, no balls and wide. And that really, for a little medium pace ball, is very poor bowling. It's in the air. It's caught, it's out, caught Patterson. So Assey, one sweep too many. It flew low and hard straight to Patterson, who did not have to move at all this time. So Assey's caught Patterson, bowled by Harper. For 21. And England have lost their second wicket with a score of 90. Yes, it's unusual for Bilathi to hit the sweep shot in the air. He looked to play it perfectly well. The ball must just have bounced a little bit. It didn't really go high. It only went about 10 feet high all the way. But dead at Patterson. They added to either side and that would have been far more run. Mike Catting, the England captain, joins Graham Gooch. Oh, I don't think he got a bat to that. That'll be interesting. Four wide signal. Harper to Gooch. Oh! Well, he was all but bold. And if he had been, it would have been almost entirely of Gooch's doing. Extraordinary piece of cricket for a man who's in control. Tried to step away, went back in, got completely disorientated and thought he'd been bowled. Four byes to England, the score moves on. So it's now 114 for two, and that, I think, was a, a big slice of luck. And uh, when he bowled it straight, to see what happens. Poor Carl Hooper. Big point of the match because if Richards can't trust him any longer and really, and he's third over now, run rate just galloping along, which makes it even more unnecessary for Graham Gooch to have had a bit of fancy footwork he did in the last over. And that really, that's been England's undoing in this competition. Oh, another beautifully placed shot by Gatting. Maybe not quite the timing, but the placing of the ball was absolutely perfect along that narrow channel to extra cover. And now the enforced bowling change, really. Nevertheless, uh, one not to be taken lightly. The Richards has struck before at difficult situations. Replacing Hooper. 
three overs for 27, as well as six wides. So, the riches to see if he can put his finger in the dice. Goes for it. Great cheer around the ground. Graham Gooch has 50. Really has played very well. It was very difficult batting in the early stages when the big seamers, Patterson and Walsh and Benjamin, steamed in on this pitch. Well played, Graham Gooch. That's out. And it was on the card. A third shout for LBW against Mike Gatting. Never quite seemed to pick up the fact that Richards was drifting away swingers, straightening out from leg to off. And this time, a sweep and LBW. Yes, twice before, Richards has moved one a little bit from leg to off. No hesitation there for umpire Shah. A key wicket there, Gatting. They put on 64, Mike Gatting and Graham Gooch. And England's last specialist batsman, Alan Lamb, coming for the wicket. First ball, short of the length, and that's Alan Lamb's favourite shot. Beautifully timed, four runs just behind square and square on the offside. So we've got to 42 overs, eight overs left. And uh, there's a change of bowling. Now back comes... Patrick Patterson. He's bowled five overs so far. Beautifully played. Quite regal. Graham Gooch stepping back outside leg stump. And just choosing that big gap at extra cover. So oh, it's in the air. That's easily out. 92 he's out for. Never quite understood the, uh, the business of darting around like an outside half at the crease and then playing a shot. A little bit off balance, but that's a marvellous innings by Graham Gooch. Caught by Harper at deep mid-wicket. Off Patterson for 92. Yeah, as you can see, Gooch going backwards and forwards. And really then you're not in a position to get your balance right. And... Uh, it is a marvellous innings by Gooch. He really has played well. But I do believe that when you've got in and got 90-odd, that you can stand still and you can play better if you're perfectly balanced. John Embury is the incoming batsman. And the score is 209 for four now. We're in the 45th over. Oh, that's the most... Delicate shot. Extraordinary shot by Lamb. I'm not sure because Patterson just cannot believe it. It was a straight ball and Lamb presented half of that. So that's the gap. You can see how all the England batsmen have been aiming for that extra cover gap, stepping away outside leg stump. John Embury does it very well. Or even to the good degree. I don't think that truly hit the middle of the bat, but at this stage, the 48th over, I don't think John Embury really worries about it. A little bit like his bridge call, and it's inconsistent, Tony. It goes either side of the wicket, but uh, the main thing is it's four more runs. Caught him. Exit Alan Lamb. Alan Lamb is out for 43, 250 for five. And again, the important thing that uh, Patrick Patterson has done this with both Gooch and Lamb, when they've backed away, he's followed them, got it right into the feet. You can see he tucks Lamb up here, he was trying to make room, and the ball just lobbing away to square leg. And that's the important point we're talking about. The ball has really got to concentrate, get it right in the right place. And a very important wicket there for West Indies.
It's impossible for the fielding captain to defend all the fields when you have to have four fielders inside the 30-yard circle and extra cover was exposed. And it's exactly what the Freighters did. So four more runs. That's 263 now for five England. And there are three balls left. That'll do. Bat on ball. Again, he pays attention to Mr. Lillingworth. Bat on ball. Only a snick, but it went very fine and went for four runs. Just below our commentary point here. Peter Lush being the manager. And uh, Paul Downton. Had it up, but only one ball left. He'll not be needed. Yes, yeah, it hit straight through the ball, which uh, the Freitas did then. He was nearly forced to get some sort of touch in on this wicket, and that's what happened on that occasion. A little outside age, and four runs down to third man. Last ball. They'll go for one. Everybody wants two. Come on, Defraitus. Well, thanks to a fumble, how right John Embry was to take that. That ball, that first run quickly. 269 England score then. 269 for the loss of five wickets. A healthy total then by England with Gooch leading the way. A magnificent innings of 92 scored after a very difficult start against the West Indies Seamers. A good support along the way from Lamb with 40 and Embury 24 not out. Of the bowlers, Patterson 3 for 56, the chief wicket taker, and Harper one wicket, Richards one wicket for 32, where they came a little bit unstuck when Hooper failed to bowl his full quota, just three overs for 27. So West Indies required 270 at a run rate of 5.4. We'll join the West Indies innings, the first ball, the third over, one for naught, the fate of Sidbury for Simmons. Well, that's a very positive shot from Simmons. Beautifully placed. It was in the air, but he was in total control of that shot. Four runs to Simmons. He's been a great success in this series. He got 50 against Pakistan and 89 against Sri Lanka. Fourth over to be bowled by Neil Foster. Desmond Haynes batting. Well, another Caribbean shot. Tremendous flair and style by Desmond Haynes. Played at purely on length, just short of a length by Foster. And the ball going off the back foot, past mid on. And the score moves on. West Indies are nine for no wicket. Well, I suppose there may be vague thoughts for Cordon Bowl, but so firmly hit by Simmons. Never holding back, thrashed it past Foster, and that was a near disastrous over for Foster. 13 off the over. Yes, again, Simmons really on the up a little bit. It deflated the same way, and I suppose Neil Foster would be disappointed that he didn't get two hands to onto the ball. It would have been difficult to hang on to. Deflated now, two hands. Hold him, hold out feet. Haynes, caught by Affey, rolled by De Freitas. A false shot this time to square leg. Nine to Haynes, and the total is 18. Well, that's really a bonus wicket for England. Haynes has seemed to be set to be looking for the shorter delivery. And it was quite short, it was probably just in De Freitas' own half. And he hit it quite firmly. I suppose you're just a little bit unlucky if you pick the one man out on the leg side. Bill Affey, straight into his leg there. Incoming batsman, Richie Richardson. Just look at that run. Just leaned on that. Change of bowling. And about to mark out his run is Gladstone Small. Poor ball by Small, short, cut away savagely by Simmons. Gladstone Small making the error of seeing a little bit of lift the other end and then trying to look for it by digging it in. 
with his three fielders on the offside. Embry to bowl to Richie Richardson. Lovely nudge. Exactly where there's no fielder. John Embry bowling to just three on the offside. And Richie Richardson just eases that down very fine, the third man. They bowled him. Well bowled Embury. So, Philip Simmons is bowled by Embury for 25. You see it there, not forward. And the ball just going out, drifting out with the arm, and the off comes going down. Well bowled, John Ember. Steve Richards, the new batsman. Batsman small to Viv Richards. And straight away, just whipping inside that, away to square like you nonchalant be. Really has to keep away from that leg stump from this man. Off stump and just outside the line. Place that that's John, and that's onto the stand roof. With the Richards, strength through mid wicket. Remember, gave that just a little bit more air, and that cleared the boundary by about 30 or 40 yards. Big hit from Richards. <coughs> the fifth bowler that Ray was talking about, Eddie Hemmings, to come on to his first bowl of the match. One of the great shots from one of the great players. That was the 50 partnership between Richards and Richardson. That came off 87 balls. Second six for Viv Richards. Tremendous flows and marvellous crowd here. Look at it, they love it. That's into the awnings under the Shamianas. What a great feat for the people of Jaipur to see the great Vivian Richards. A second colossal six. Two in two balls. Just beats the fielder down a deep square leg. And Richards is beginning to cut loose. Change of bowling, Gladstone Small. At least two in this for Richard. And that is his 50, that must be. Vivian Richards is 50. Proud, love it. Started cautiously, but it's only taken 46 balls, including three sixes and four fours. Bowled him! That was the wicket. A much, much slower ball by Eddie Hemmings. Almost a slow motion shot by Viv Richards. And Viv Richards has gone. Bowled by Hemmings for 51 of 51 balls. Three sixes and four fours during the 31st over. And England have respite. Gus Logie, 26 years old. Playing his 73rd one day international. Small to Richardson. Oh, well, four runs. Pick inside edge. Beat the stumps down the leg side, and that uh, beats Paul Downton as well, who's been in very good form. So four more runs there. 155 for three. Four more. Just a nudge down leg side, and the uh, uh, unfortunate Gladstone Small has been drifting down there throughout his spell. That's a good shot, too. Again down leg side, and uh, an expensive habit from Gladstone Small.
Yep. Hemmings just lost his line and Logie picked it up. Beautifully played. Quite a full length. Did very well indeed to jam it down there. And it just needs a touch of the mat on this outfield for the ball to race away for four runs. 175 now, West Indies. Lots of three wickets. And they're chasing 270 to win this match. And a change in the bowling, so Gladstone Small goes off. He bowled eight overs, two spells, five and three. It's the turn of John Embury, who bowled five overs so far, one for 22. He was the man who bowled Phil Simmons. Now well, there's a top edge there. And yes, he scored. Eddie Emmings, the fielder, go for the sweet shot. And we said before I rushed over, I was just saying that he wasn't reading the arm ball. That's probably the arm ball again then. And a slight top edge, the ball going straight in the air. Caught Eddie Emmings, bowled John Embry. So that's just Logie gone for 22. We're in the 38th over. 182. Not the length ball to sweep there. Little chance of controlling it. Unless he was lucky enough to either be named Viv Richards or hit it in the middle, and he wasn't. like it was going to be out there just clearing Tim Robinson the long on one more yard and that would have been another wicket Richardson was the batsman the cross from just Logie playing that sweet shot just clearing Tim Robinson there long on the great is the ball and that's been pulled away that's going to be four more runs Richardson now moving on to 78. And it's going on to 193 for four. John Embry now to continue from the country box end. It will go into his box. Now again, the sweet shot has brought a few runs today, but it's also taking a few wickets. That's the 200 up. West Indies in the 40th over and the last 50 came off just 50 balls well, just a little bit of turn and bounce but Hooper making room for himself there he runs that away down to third man for four runs and you don't really want the new batsman to be getting away with four runs And it's actually this time, and yes, Hooper's gone. Beautiful diving catch by Downson off the bone of Defreitas. So that's Hooper caught Downson, bowl Defreitas for eight, making the score 208 for five. And we're in the 41st over. Well, this was a great catch. No slip. The keeper's got to go for everything. It was fast. It was wide. Beautifully taken, and Paul Downton's had a much better day all through this match behind the stumps. And a shout, and yes, it's been given out, and that wasn't a very good stroke. The ball going away, but it was quite wide, and just nicking Foster through to Downton. The Dujan caught Downton, Bolt Foster, one. And the score now. 211 for six and we're in the 40 second over well one day shot here opening the face trying to run it down no slip but there was an alert wicket keeper and there's the result jubilant foster anything really is profit for him at the end of his bowling spell now in his 10th over an unhappy start conceded 33 off his first five overs and there goes an, an even unhappier Jeffrey Dujon how many times have we seen him, elegant looking player, all the strokes, somehow fails to make his count. So, the last real bit of support batting coming for Richie Richardson, Roger Harper. Back to Small's main problem has been just occasionally drifting down the leg side. 
So we won't want that at this stage of the game. Well, it's, it's wicket could be out. And yes, he's been given out. Eddie Hemming picking it up at short third. Had a shot. And as quick as Roger Harper is, he couldn't beat the throw. So that's Roger Harper run out for three. The fielder, Eddie Hemmings. Well, Hemmings v Harper. What a contest that, that is. Speed of hand versus speed of foot. Hemmings pouncing, taking aim. And a desperate Harper directed. Two one nine for seven. And there's a shout this time there from Richardson's gone. A wild flash at Glaston Small and Downton taking yet another catch. So Richardson caught Downton ball small, 92, and win the 44th over. Well, what a collapse. There were West Indies sailing along at 210 for four. Wild slash from Richardson going for his favourite square cut. Perhaps a bit tired, he's been batted throughout the majority of this innings. Jubilant, small and Downton. So we've had the loss there of four wickets. Oh, and that ball in middle stump. Walsh went for a big hit. Really pulling away, not really looking at the ball. And the middle stump down, so... 224, nine wickets down, and we're in the 46th over. And Walsh bowled Hemmings. This is the problem for Walsh. Not really one to paddle the ball around for ones and twos. Got to go for that sort of hit. With the run rate as well required. Little or no alternative. And really, England deserve a lot of credit for the way they've stuck at it, things weren't going their way early on, they didn't bowl that well, Viv Richards looked ready to cut loose this is the Freitas it's out well it carried all that way it was a square flashing drive it carried miles to Foster at deep point, who never had to move and that's a great victory for England it's the most important victory really of their Group B qualifying matches. They now have to play Sri Lanka and they would hope to beat Sri Lanka and go through to the semi-finals. It's a great tonic for England supporters. Extreme disappointment for the West Indies. They tried really hard. Take one more look at that with Ray Lingwood. Yes, you never know when you're in a safe position in one day fielding. You think it deep square on the boundary. You're probably comfortable down there but with the batsman stepping away, slashing and that really carried head eye to Neil Foster. He would probably have gone for six in fact if he hadn't caught it. But he really plucked it out of the sky without any trouble at all. And that really is a great win for England. Well, astonishing collapse then for West Indies after a promising start and a furious middle. The big partnership, 82, between Richardson and Richards. But then perseverance by the England bowlers. Fine bowling by De Freitas. Nine overs, three for 27. And Embury, two for 41. Hemmings coming good too with his two wickets for 46. Excellent win then. The man of the match was Graham Gooch for his beginnings of 92. In their final match on Friday, then they will qualify for the semi-finals. This is the situation in Group B. Pakistan already assured of winning it with 20 points, already through to the first semi-final. And England now with 12 points, having moved ahead of the West Indies. And the run rate between the two of them, well, it's uh, down to fractions. Changed as Robinson and...